When it came to exploding buildings, disintegrating people, transforming witches, and village destroying twisters, we used to blow up miniatures, melt wax puppets, use camera filters, and spin rags to trick the audience into buying the effects. But that hasn't been the case in a very long time. These days, the effects are simulated using 3D software that tries its best to emulate real world physics. Over time, movie effects have gotten more and more impossible thanks to the underappreciated efforts of thousands on thousands of artists across the globe. It takes time, money, creativity, and a lot of patience to put these shots together. And at the core of it all, the ones responsible for this literal movie magic are the effects artists and TDs. They're the ones responsible for configuring and dialing in all of the simulations we see today in modern films, making them look and behave incredibly realistically, and providing the lighting and compositing departments with all of the elements they need to integrate completely believable effects into their shots. As always, we'll be diving into what makes an effect tick, the softwares used in the industry, the skills effects artists need to have, what they typically do in a day, and what the future of the role may look like and ultimately how you can get started on your way to becoming an effect simulation expert. In the movie industry, effect simulations are usually broken up into two major categories, effects and character effects, or CFX. In fact, they're usually two entirely separate departments with completely different artists assigned to each task. When talking about effects, we're usually referring to everything from fluids, particles, destruction, smoke, and pyro. So your typical water splashes, magical effects, buildings crumbling, explosions, and everything in between. Whereas CFX is any kind of simulation that's specific to characters and creatures, so hair, fur, muscles, clothes, and often crowd simulations are lumped into this category as well. In this video, we'll mostly be focusing on the effects side of things since I've already covered the topic of cloth simulation and I'll likely cover the rest of CFX in the future. When trying to create a new effect, the general concept is to ingest as much reference as possible and from there break it down to its individual elements. For instance, if you were to look at some footage of a real life explosion, you'd likely notice a few individual parts that you could isolate into their own layers, usually an emissive core that turns to smoke, a shockwave of dust that expands outwards radially, some trails that fly out into a point, and of course some debris and particles flying out from the ground or whatever was exploded. And that same train of thought could then be applied to almost any effect really. In a massive water effect, you might have a base ocean pass, some individual splash passes, a white water pass, and so on. In a building destruction, you'd notice the actual large chunks of concrete falling, some rebar or wood and glass potentially, and small debris and large dust clouds, each of which can be broken out and simulated and rendered individually, to later be composited back together. On top of their exceptional technical mastery of the software, what separates a good effects artist from a great one is their eye, specifically how adept they are at being able to mimic the real life motion of those material. For instance, when simulating fluids, you'll often have exposed parameters for things like viscosity and surface tension. And when simulating smoke and fire, you'll often have access to things like temperature, buoyancy, and cooling rate. Think of an effects TD as an air traffic controller, flipping switches and dialing in trajectories from the safe distance, except instead of talking to pilots and managing planes, they're talking to software, blowing stuff up and making blue spirit animals come out of magic wands. So if you're not scared off yet and still want to hop into the daunting but rewarding challenge of becoming an effects artist, our sponsor for this video is actually a great resource for getting started down that path. Skillshare offers courses on everything from general photography to specific Houdini simulation courses. It's a great way to get your fundamental art skills brushed up with some creative courses like digital photography and composition, or to dive directly into Houdini simulation work with lessons that'll walk you through creating your first few simulation projects in Houdini. And if you're less interested in effects for film and would prefer to use other software like Blender or C4D, then they've got you covered with some simulation courses for that too. I'm personally very very interested in Frank Kane's deep learning and neural networks with Python to further advance my own machine learning skills with Python. It's the programming language to know if you're working in the VFX industry and Skillshare is a great resource for doing just that. The first 500 people to use the link in the description will get a one month free trial of Skillshare. And despite being masters of the mystical arts capable of conjuring up any storm, effects artists still abide by the rules of mere mortals. And like any of us, they'll start their day at the coffee machine too. Caffeine is the mana potion of the VFX world after all. Once they've settled back down into their workstations, they'll take a peek at the production tracking software and take note of any newly assigned tasks. From there, when starting a new effect, it'll be paramount to dig up as much real-world reference as possible, and then begin breaking the effect down into its elements that you may need to build out. Now that you've got a plan, it'll be time to assemble all of the assets you'll need to get started. That might mean a building model you need to destroy, a ground you may need to collide against, an animated car you might need to blow up, and probably a camera to frame the shot for context. With all the elements in your scene, it'll be time to begin prepping your simulation, tagging your geometry for collision, and potentially creating proxies of your high-resolution geometry for quicker simulation times, or making 
keeping things watertight so that nothing unwanted accidentally passes through. You might even need to generate new geometry procedurally depending on the needs of the shot. Then you'd start setting up material properties of your object to get the right sense of weight, friction, or viscosity, and sometimes pre-fracturing it in an art-directable kind of way to get the shapes that you want. And from there, the real fun begins. Almost no two effects are alike. Each shot can take you into wildly different directions. You may need to set up growth solvers or paint masks to have things react in specific ways at specific times. If you're working on a film or TV series, all that matters really is what you see from that perspective of the camera. So part of the job is often finding cheats to get the look that you want from the camera view and designing the effect to look best from that angle. With everything prepped, the simulation begins. FX artists will typically kick off many iterations of a simulation, slightly tweaking all of these parameters and sending off quick renders, typically to a render farm, in order to get some feedback on the general motion of their effect. They'll keep iterating and iterating, wedging many versions together until everything is perfectly dialed in. Once they're content with all of the individual layers of their effect, they'll typically quickly composite their layers together and send a render off to dailies, where it can then be reviewed by their supervisors. This is the part that every artist loves, where supervisors will meticulously inspect every square pixel of the screen real estate on every frame until they've identified any potential issues or thing that bothers them, where they'll then kick it back to the artist to continue iterating until inevitably, eventually, it has to finally be approved. Typically, only because time and money is really running out, to make its way downstream to the lighting department that will adjust the final shading, lights, and interaction of the effect on the rest of the scene, and render off the passes to in turn be composited into the final footage. When it comes to effects work, there are a few data types that are important to be aware of. Most other departments simply deal with geometry, meaning their work can typically be represented as connected points that form individual polygons, namely vertices, edges, and faces. But when it comes to effects, other attributes like velocity, density, temperature need to be accounted for too, because effects artists often deal with volumes in addition to geometric surfaces. To represent volumes, 3D softwares break up 3D objects into smaller individual 3D cells, known as voxels. And each of these voxels stores the data required, such as density and temperature, in order to represent that portion of the volume. Voxels can kind of be thought of as three-dimensional pixels that represent a volume in 3D space, hence the name. And the file format that allows us to define and store this voxel data is known as a VDB, which stands for Voxel Database. If you're used to other aspects of 3D where you might be saving your assets out as OBJs, FBXs, or Olympics, you can think of VDBs as kind of the same thing, but for volumes. And the industry standard software, the one that best handles all of these complex data operations and has all the tools needed to create exceptional looking effects, is none other than, drumroll please, Houdini. It's at the core of almost any effects department that I've encountered, as it offers the best out-of-the-box experience to be able to handle inc incredibly complex operations and really exposes all the necessary attributes and parameters you need to really dive into the details. It can handle an immense amount of data at once, and its node-based structure lets you easily debug and create multiple setups across multiple shots all within one session. There are other softwares that offer complete effect solutions like Maya's Bifrost and add-ons for 3ds Max like Tyflow and Phoenix. Blender also has some stuff. And more recently, Django FX's Embergen, LiquidGen, and GeoGen have emerged as really cool, easy to use, real-time effect solutions. Some studios like Scanline, famous for the incredible water simulation effects work, have developed their own proprietary tools directly into 3ds Max, known as Flowline. But even they use Houdini for a lot of their other effects work. Because when it comes to effects work, Houdini offers the most complete package capable of handling pretty much every situation. Vellum for grains, soft bodies, cloth and muscles, pops and dops for particles, flip for fluids, pyro solvers for smoke and fire, and bullet for rigid bodies, among many other tools to solve your way out of any problem. So if you're planning on diving into the world of effects and eventually land a job in effects or in VFX or animation, without an ounce of doubt, Houdini is the tool to learn. But as with any other VFX discipline, learning the software isn't going to be enough on its own. Solid, creative, and technical troubleshooting skills are essential. While you don't need to know how to draw or code necessarily to work in the field, it doesn't hurt either. Ultimately, effects artists are still expected to be, you know, artists. So having foundational art skills helps. Knowing some basic composition and photography knowledge can really help you sell a believable effect. Furthermore, because of the technical nature of effects work, knowing how to program a bit of Python can take you a long way. Houdini also has a 
built-in language called Vex, and understanding it can really unlock a lot of the potential that the software can offer. It's used heavily to manipulate points, geometry, and volumes directly with code. It isn't strictly necessary, however, as most of the operations can also be done directly with nodes in a kind of visual scripting fashion. But the technical component remains. It's still vital to be a competent troubleshooter, as things may often not work out as you'd expect, and you'll be expected to leave no stone unturned trying to resolve the issues that inevitably arise as you work through your shots. It's no surprise that AI is on the rise in a massive way. We're seeing many AI tools slowly start to creep into our industry and attempt to rip our tasks away from us. But as of now, FX feels kind of safe, other than some machine learning assisted solvers that really only seem to speed up FX solving times a bit. There isn't much in the way of FX artists here, at least nothing that seems like it'll completely compete or even really speed up large chunks of FX work. All of the AI video generation tools fail to offer the level of control and physical accuracy that you'd be required to achieve with simulation work. And so for now, I don't think we'll be seeing too much disruption for a while. Don't get me wrong, I don't doubt that AI will make its way to the effects world. I just think that for now, it'll mostly come in the form of improved existing tools rather than fully replacing the work that they do. NVIDIA announced some AI optimizations to the VDB file format, known as Neural VDB, and SideFX hasn't been shying away from AI implementations, stating that we'll likely be seeing a lot more AI integration into existing tools over the next few years. And that is a brief overview of how effects and films and TV are simulated. To sum it up, usually with Houdini, using nodes to manipulate and to animate points, curves, and volumes in 3D space, dialing in parameters to get them to react realistically, and using solvers letting the software simulate the effect over the frame range of a shot. If you'd like to learn more, join our Discord and subscribe. We'll be covering the process in more depth and diving into the roles of other artists across the VFX industry.